comes down to like a clutch moment in the game, do you want to be the guy to shoot the shot all the time? I would. Like, I would, if I worked hard the whole game, like, kill myself in defense, kill myself in offense to get something. I want to be that guy to finish it off. I was watching your highlights and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's a center? <laughs> And you, you got handled like that? Like, why are you cheating? Why? <laughs> That's <laughs> like, a good question. Like, nobody asked me this question. Uh, I'm not a sender. Uh, they uh, just signed me like a sender. So I'm, uh, I'm cheating. Yeah, I'm cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, like, try to be like that. Everybody calls that point forward. Well, how has growing up in Croatia shaped you as not just a player, but also a young team? I don't know what to say. We in Croatia are a small country. We are a small country. Mm -hmm. We don't have uh, many, many, we are a basketball country, but we don't have many kids who play basketball. Like we have more popular sports like football, football, like everybody in our country plays football. Like I play football sometimes. And those kids who are like top, they are like, I would say pushed, pushed forward, pushed to their limits, pushed to grow, to go better, like get pushed and play in the senior team with all the guys to get more physical, to learn something that we don't know yet. But would you say the hardest part about growing up as a basketball player in Croatia is the, the small amount of people that play basketball there or would you say it's something else? The hardest part? Yeah. Well, in Croatia, like, the hardest part is the transition. Like, when you have 16 years, when you are 16, they just push you, like, between guys that have 35. Like, you're oh, just really? standing there and looking, what's going on? It's hard to adapt. It, it needs time. But somebody who adapts quick, like, he's going to be a monster. <laughs> Everybody knows that he's going to be a monster. So the hardest part is to adapt between older guys. And when you adapt, everything else is a piece of cake. You're already one of um, the biggest European prospects and you're going to turn 18 in next month. So what are some things you want to work on and some things that you have learned over the years? I'm trying to learn everything. Like, I want to have everything in my playing uh, arsenal. I don't know how they say it. Uh, so I, uh, mostly I work on my jump shot. Like most of the time I only work on my jump shot, my shooting. My shooting of dribbles, shooting of pick and pops, getting out of screens. So that's the main part of my working. And then on that, I just put a lot of handles and a lot of post works like fadeaways and then hook shots. So I just want to be a complete player. I have a good passing ability. Like when we were kids, I was the tallest always always the tallest and I am always like we call center let's say center but when we are kids we're just learning to play with the ball that's the style in Croatia like no no paint no nothing we just shoot handle and that's why you why you call me a cheat code <laughs> well as a center in the game right now what are some of your favorite centers of all time you have to choose five and give me your top five centers of all time. Fucking bum. Real centers or power forwards? Ah. Uh, hmm. You know what? Give me, give me your centers. Give me your centers. Centers. Yeah. Like first one is Hakim. Uh, he's number one for me. He's definitely like the most talented center played in the NBA. Right. Second, I would say Shaquille because he's a monster. Like he, he's a monster. Nobody, nobody. I think there was never like that physical player like him in the NBA, and I don't think it will be soon. The next one, I would say Kareem, because he just dominated the NBA in his era. Fourth one, Wilt. Wilt was a great player. Like he was unstoppable. Like those numbers, 112. Is it 112? 
or I'm mistaken. No, 100 points. How many points? Oh yeah, he scored like, okay. I believe it was 100 or, I think it was 101 points. Probably just 100, 100. though. I think, I think it was probably 100. Uh, 100 plus, like, who, 100 plus. Yes, <laughs> whoever scored that is, is crazy. <laughs> That's all we know. Uh, so he's number four, and I will say, I need to say Bill Russell because he has like 11 rings, 11 rings, am I right? Yeah. So I would name him number five. Love your list. I love your list. That's like a Mount Rushmore right there. For sure. Well, you asked the best five. We spoke earlier about you watching football all the time. So I'm going to give you two great Croatian legends. You have Luka Modric and even Rakitic. Who are you choosing to be on your fantasy soccer team? I think Luka is a better player. Luka? I think Luka is a better player. Why Luka? Well, he he was named the best player in the world. Like the ball, the god, the ball, Ballon d'Or. Mm. <laughs> what do we True. have to say more? What do we have to say more? True. Honestly, I like Rakitic more because he played for the better team. Okay. Yeah. What? <laughs> yep. Wait, 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 wait. Yep. <laughs> Okay. We're talking about basketball. Let's skip that question, please. Yep. <laughs> Let's okay. please skip that okay. question. Well, we can talk about this after. <laughs> Don't tell me you're a Madrid fan. No, nah, I'm not. But I'm not the Barcelona fan. Oh, okay. Okay. I respect it. Your dad, uh, Nicola Parkinson, he also played for um, Sabona, your current team right now in Europe. Was this mostly your choice or your dad's choice? Well, it's the best team in our hometown. I live in Zagreb. I mean, I came to Zagreb when I was first grade, when father stopped playing basketball. He finished his career here, so I just started practicing there because father was something in a club. He was like a GM or something. So I would just like boring to him and ask him every day, can I start playing? Can I start playing? He was always saying no, 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 because he think he's, it's too early. He started like playing basketball at his 15. When he was 15, I started playing in fourth grade. Like that's 10 years old, I think. So he, all, he always told me, like, it's too early, call something else, play something else. I was like swimming, tennis, taekwondo, everything. I, I tried everything, but uh, I just loved basketball when I was a kid. I was always with him in practice, uh, at practice in the gyms, always. Like, when he was lifting weights, I was there looking like, oh, I, <laughs> be the I will do that one day. So basically, I, when I was two years old, I had a plan. I'll go that way, and this is my way, and I choose that path. So that's when I started playing basketball. Wait, no matter what, you knew you wanted. No to matter play. what, no matter what. What was some advice that your dad gave you that you have kept with yourself every day? Basically, like everything. We talk about everything. Like we go through everything, especially when I made make mistakes. When I make mistakes, we basically go go through them. We watch the game that I played bad, like something like that. So we basically go through that through the game and watch every mistake. We stop the video, we turn the video, watch it again, then I return again, then watch it again. So he I need to say he advises me at everything. Right. And then I just try that to bring in to my game. If Bogdanovich played in the series against the Nuggets, does Denver still win the series after being down 3-1? Well, that's a hard question. I think Jazz would win. Like, Donovan wouldn't play that great, but I think Jazz will still win. I think they're a better team. But mm -hmm. what Denver made this year, like, 3-1 two times, that won't be made like in the next 50 years. If you Let's be real, Bojan yeah. is that kind of player that scores 20 and you like doesn't take many shots. Yep. He won't, he doesn't play with the ball all the time. Like he's like mm -hmm. unseen, but when you look at the stats after the game, he has 20. Yeah. Let's be real. <laughs> so, it's like a silent 20 points. Yeah, yeah. The, those are the best players, like, right. for me. <laughs> Who do you feel like impacted Croatian basketball more? 
Drazen Petrovic or Tony Kukoc? Well, I would rather say Drazen because uh, he went first to the NBA and he like opened the path to all Croatians to NBA. He showed to our country, to to our people that that isn't impossible to go to the NBA. I think I, I wasn't born that then yet. But I don't think people believed in that, that, that a guy from Croatia, like a small country, can go to the NBA, if you get me. Right. And then Tony came after that, and Tony, Tony was a great player. Tony like, did something huge in the NBA, made a, made a huge impact. And now players come to the NBA, like we had fourth pick Dragan Bender, we had fifth pick Mario Hezonja. Like, we are making a big impact in the NBA. Right. And you love to see it. You love to I see love it. I love to see it. I um, love to see it. You won, personally, MVP for the U16 European Championship two years ago. So how has that experience helped you to continue to face harder competition day by day? I don't know what to say. Like, it is an honor. First of all, it's an honor, like, to see that you work hard, that you like kill yourself every day at practice and again and again every day by day by day and then that you can like to win some award like like that like let's say best player in Europe, MVP of European Championship that is just a motivation for next that's just motivation and it just motivates you when you come home, I'll work even harder, harder, harder. Like, I can do it, I can make it. Like you said, All-Star Game, I can make it, I can do it. Like, it's just motivation. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I don't know, I don't live in the past. It just boosted me, gave me, like, hope, dreams. But I don't know, I don't live of that any, anymore. Like what happens now with this? If I can't score 20 more, it's like, what does that mean to me? That MVP, if you get me. Yeah. If I don't show it now, it doesn't matter. Who will, who will remember of that in five years? Only me and my mother and my father. Like that's <laughs> everything. What would you say is your ultimate goal as a basketball player? I would say like MVP of the NBA, but that isn't realistic. <laughs> I like to set high goals. It just brings the best of me so i would say like all-star game mvp anything of that. Right. i'll be happy with that right please don't stop setting your goals high because i i know that that pushes people to work harder and it sets yeah. the bar high i want to shoot high mm -hmm. that brings the best out of me i just told you right i think everybody needs to push push their limits harder as it gets harder it gets mm -hmm. the big the the awards are better. The mm. achievements are better. The other day when Anthony Davis at the game winner against the Denver Nuggets, in the interview he was saying, oh, I want the big time shots. I want the big time plays. As um, a talented player like yourself, when it comes down to like a clutch moment in the game, do you want to be the guy to shoot the shot all the time? I would. Like, I would. If I worked hard the whole game, like, kill myself in defense, kill myself in offense, to get something. I want to be that guy to finish it off. Mm -hmm. Why not? Like, I want to have something in my hands uh, to depend something on me. So I agree with Anthony in that. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to take those <laughs> big time shots. Right, so basically depending on how, you, how your game was, that, yes. That day. No, right. it doesn't matter. If I have a it's bad matter. game, mm -hmm. if I have a bad game, and if my team expects me to take the shot, if they know he's our best player, he has to take the shot. I will always take the shot. Right. Like Lakers probably depend on Anthony. Like they want him to take the shot, so let him take the shot. Mm 